Hey guys, and welcome to Complete Street Performance. I'm Andrew, I'm your host, which you probably won't see me much in this video. Do we see me much? A significant amount. A significant amount? Oh yeah. man, that sucks. That sucks for you guys. Well, if you like seeing me, hit that subscribe button. That's like down there or over there. I don't know where it is. Uh, hit that subscribe button and uh, yeah, do that. Do that first before watching this video. Did you do it yet? No? Okay, well, we're gonna start anyway. So today we have C7 Z06s that we have upgraded with the Magnuson Supercharger with basically a heads cam package on, uh, on both of them. And there is one difference between the two of them. It's not even this car. But the one difference between the two of them is one of them has the force inductions inner chiller and the other one does not. So with that, Let's uh, show you the builds and show you how much of a difference it actually makes. One of them's a little bit more higher strung than the other, but uh, I think you guys are gonna enjoy this. So when the, one of the big limitations of the C7Z06 is this front end right here. It's only so big, that's what she said. And uh, with that, it can only handle so much air, it can only do so much cooling. And that's why we have one of these bad boys with the force induction inner chiller and another one that probably should have gotten it. I think it's one of the best modifications that you can do to the C7Z06, uh, but you guys be the judge. You tell me if you think it's worth it. later that took a while to figure out I'm not gonna say what it was it wasn't stupid it was very complicated but that we're going to keep in house because that was just retarded and it was rare I mean I've tuned a whole bunch of 2019s and this was the one that really gave me uh, some issues that I have never expected to see so I'm gonna test one more thing to make sure it wasn't that. We're gonna run her again and then get some fuel. Good, still, still acting properly. So it is what I thought it was, which is a rarity, holy hell. And we're gonna let it have a cool down because right now we're pulling out uh, eight degrees of timing due to the temperatures, which are hanging out about 150 to 167 degrees, 170 degrees at the end of the pull on the Magnuson 2650, which is normally a couple degrees above ambient. So we have heat soaked to high hell. This thing would benefit from an inner chiller so it doesn't get like this. Even though the Magnuson has wonderful pull attempts, it starts at 160 and ends at 168 of the pull. It's still starting at probably 60 degrees hotter than it really could be right now. Uh, so a uh, long cool down, maybe until tomorrow, and then we'll run it again and see the actual power this bitch is making. Wow. 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 Uh, stock knock sensor sensitivity, stock knock sensor data that's uh, on just pump gas, 
with no inner chiller, but it is a cold pool. We did see at the end of day yesterday uh, with hot pools, uh, it was what? What was it? 797. No. Oh, it was in the 60s. It was like 690. Yeah, it was bad. And here, uh, the temperatures in the blower start at 103 and at 119. No, 117. They were ending over 160. The uh, shit. I think there's more in this thing, but I don't want to press it any further because it's gonna. We're in the danger zone now, so I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it where it's at. But I think that there's more in this thing because we actually are dropping into a, a hair of a lower timing level as. Uh, the cylinder air mass ramps up, the timing will drop down, and we did do that, but that's okay because we hit, that's that little lip at the top where it kind of looks a little funky, it pulled a little bit of timing out, not from knocker guard, but just because it went beyond the threshold, but I, I think that's good because uh, it's keeping it safe, it's keeping it where we want it to be. We don't want this thing going above 850, this blower. Like if it was a Pro Charger style, where it ramps up the boost to just the high end where the oil pressure gets, you know, really high, I, I'd let it eat, but I want to keep things, uh, uh, you know, safe for the long haul. And here at Fleet Street, we go to 845, 850, like that's our limit. I'm not going to try to squeeze out five more horsepower, that'd be stupid. But uh, we're gonna we're gonna leave it right there. And that's awesome. That we'll deliver it back to the customer with 845 rear wheel horsepower on a cold pull. And or like when you're moving down the street, like if you have that good airflow change, that'll be good too. But he should have an inner chiller. The C7 needs an inner chiller. It's got a grill like that big and it, the heat exchangers never work out that great, could totally benefit. In fact, we have another car here with an interchiller, much smaller camshaft. Uh, the baby, you know, uh, stealth cam idle. basically. Smooth idle, we, but let's call it stealth. It's really, really stealthy. It, uh, that's making 800 and some, and uh, we're gonna find out what that, what that one is right now, but that's, that's what the, a lot less boost. We just turned up the boost. Oh boy, we gotta find out what that thing does. Okay, let's pivot to that and see how that goes. We're in a different car. That was weird. So this particular car is roughly the same modifications except it's got a much smaller camshaft. As you can probably tell, it's tame sounding, uh, but it does have an inner chiller. So my IAT3s, that's our, uh, uh, basically our manifold temperature. In fact, that's the correct manifold temperature where it actually is reading the same as ambient. In fact, a little bit less. Uh, oh, a little bit more, but I, my IAT1, that's in the intake, is reading 86. My IAT3 is also reading 86. When I give it a little rip, right now so we're doing way better than that other car that started 23 degrees more I think it's 23 degrees something like that around there uh, more than uh, uh, where this one's gonna start and this is just gonna keep getting colder show them the tank condensating oh yeah cool it felt great. Yeah. It's a little hot. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we are letting this thing warm up. Uh, we're going to get a pull with the new pulley system. Basically, we've raised the boost. Should be about the boost level where the other car was at. And uh, we'll see where it lines up. And then we'll be able to repeatedly do pulls without getting heat so because of the inner chiller. So instead of having that one glory pull in the morning like we did on the other one, we'll have uh, all day to work with this thing. doing? 
It's at 66 degrees right now. 68. <laughs> rear wheel horsepower even though this is our stealthish camshaft uh, that's that's wonderful 807 on just pump gas uh, a lot of that has to do to the force induction interchiller because otherwise it probably wouldn't be doing anywhere close to that but that's that's really really wonderful the, uh, I'm sure Eric's feeling it now the lines are nice and long. So that has a lot to do with it. I don't think that this is something that you would expect without the interchiller. And I really do believe that every C7 that's supercharged should have one because the cooling on these things suck. The AC is good. The, the engine cooling is good. The, the blower stuff just sucks. It heats up like insane. And this really does a great job of keeping it down. So. That said, I think we're gonna move on to uh, the next cars. We're, uh, I think we just did the 845 on pump gas and the other one that did not have an inner chiller. But uh, when it gets heat soaked, it goes down to the low 700s, even touching the high 600s, depending how hot it gets. And that's not gonna happen on this one. At most, it's probably gonna drop down 20 horsepower with heat soak. So that's really cool. That's a testament to that. Both great builds both useful for different things like that would be more useful for a road course than this one would but i'm really happy with both of them can't wait to deliver them to the customers so that magic is brought to you by the force induction interchiller we can squeeze that in the car really really easy uh and it, it just makes an incredible incredible effect on the temperature it's making it the most consistent that your car is ever going to be i mean going uh, a spread of 20 rear wheel horsepower as the engine heats up versus a spread of over 100. That's a big deal. Now, I, I'll be honest, I might have been able to tighten that up a little bit more, but I'd like to keep these cars a little bit more conservative. So I don't want to see it be at the ragged edge, especially as the heat gets there. So I tend to pull a little bit more timing as things uh, get heated up. So we might have seen a uh, uh, down to 70, but that's still a big difference in 20. And this bad boy, because the air is much colder to begin with, does offer a heck of a lot better performance. Usually something in the neighborhood of 30 to uh, 30 to 50 rear wheel horsepower extra. So big, big performance gain, big consistency. Uh, the only thing that you wouldn't use it for is uh, road course racing, which I said earlier in the video, because the AC may not work during the road course race. This might not be able to keep up. So now I know you guys have been asking in previous videos, what do we have coming up? What are we taking to LS Fest? Because we are going to LS Fest. I can't take the Plaid, because that's not an LS engine or even an LT engine. And uh, my CA Corvette is just getting done at Oaks Detail. Yeah, I still have one of those. I have the uh, uh, hard top convertible that we're gonna be fitting the uh, inner chiller and CSP twin turbo kit too, but uh, I don't think that's going to be ready. We're less than a month out. How how long? Uh, twenty seven days. I made a post today. Did you? I did. <laughs> twenty seven days. Okay, so twenty seven days, probably twenty six days when you guys see this video. And uh, let's see, what else do I have? Well, I got this bad boy. This is uh, oh, I don't even think I revealed this on the channel yet. I'm gonna have yeah, to someone just parked this here. That's not yours. Yeah, until we'll, we'll, we'll figure that out. I'm, I'm gonna put the reveal video on that. That's a nostalgic car for me. Uh, well, I have my uh, truck. Now that one wouldn't be good. No. I've got. Oh, it's dark in here. Yeah. Yeah, this is like. I mean, it's less fast. You gotta show off a little bit. Well, I have. The, no, this one's not gonna work either. Man, I have a couple cars apparently. I'm carrying an interchiller all around. 
Well, it's hot out. You need to chill out. So go that way. <laughs> you know what I do have? I have a wagon. I have the CTSV wagon, but you know, it doesn't run. Yeah, this thing is pretty fun. But uh, I don't know if you guys remember a previous video, but a spark plug failed and took out my new engine. It uh, it chopped up a. Uh, a piston, a head, and uh, uh, I think the cylinder wall a little bit of the brand new engine. It was just stupid. Like two and a half weeks, I was doing part throttle tuning and the spark plug fell apart in the cylinder. But thanks to Texas Speed, we have a 427 cubic inch engine. Uh, force induction inner chiller is sending me the stage two inner chiller for this. We were using the active, which was fine. It kept it a little cool, but this thing needs the stage two setup. So we're pivoting to that to get 50 degree under uh, temperatures. And uh, yeah, we're gonna, I think this is what we're gonna take. I think if we can squeeze it in, I'm gonna get this bad boy done for LS Fest. And you guys are gonna see the wagon resurrect it and that's what, September 10th to the 12th, down in Bowling Green, Kentucky. So if you guys are gonna be there, I'll see you then. I might even bring some koozies. I'm, I'm probably gonna just drive it down. <laughs> I'm not, I, I don't wanna trailer it. I, I wanna drive it. I hope it doesn't break. That would suck. But I can, it's a wagon, I can trailer everything. I can trailer a bed in there, just in case. Breaks down. Cool, so that's what we have coming up. Also, there, there might be something else. But that's about it, guys. Thank you for watching today's video. I'll see you on the next one. Adios. Hint.